Let's talk about off-target movement of pesticide and also the impacts of surface temperature inversion. Off-target movement of pesticide can be broken down into physical or particle drift, so that's being droplets, and volatility. Now the first part's very easy to handle. Droplet and particle drift can be controlled at the point of application by selecting the appropriate nozzle and spray quality. Droplet drift is an issue when droplets are less than 150 microns. That is the size that is recognised that won't go to ground under its own weight. If those droplets are within the fraction and they get smaller and smaller, we can end up with particle movement, which can move extensive distances and create adverse damage. If there's surface temperature inversions present, this facilitates that movement to go for extended distances. Volatility drift, on the other hand, is where pesticide leaves the point of application or the site of application after the event and basically may be determined by weather conditions, the formulation of the pesticide, or some other tank mix partner that may have aggravated that pesticide's um, volatility rating. So let's consider surface temperature inversions. They happen most nights, but how hazardous a surface temperature inversion is going to be determined on some factors. Now, a surface temperature inversion is simply that you've turned the atmosphere upside down. The normal grading of temperature as you go up in height is that the temperature will decrease. That is normally what happens in the day. The sun comes up, it warms the earth, the earth warms the air next to the earth. And as the further you get away from the earth, the temperature cools. Towards evening though, the earth cools, the sun goes down, the earth cools, cool air displaces warm air. So now you have a difference, you've got an inversion. The strength of the inversion is determined with the presence or absence of breeze. And this is why on your product labels, you have requirements for, on some products, um, minimum and maximum wind speed limits. To prevent a surface temperature inversion happening in the evening, you need at least 11 k's of breeze, which is not that common. Surface temperature inversions, if the wind stays still overnight, increase in their strength until morning. And it's not until that hour and a half after sunrise, where the earth heats again, that the surface temperature inversion will decouple. It's absolutely critical that an applicator looks at the synoptic wind to know what is going on outside the inversion period or above the inversion. When the sun comes up, if you've been applying under those conditions, your droplets may be suppressed underneath the inversion. When the surface temperature inversion decouples, Droplets that you may have suspended in that atmospheric area may then move in unintended directions. Trade Day is just presented on different types of drift, but an important part to consider too is dicamba sensitivity of different crops as well. And we'll present more on this in the Vapor Grip technology video. So we've talked a lot about off-target movement and different, different types of drift, but a key part is also to consider crop sensitivity. So here we've got a table of crop sensitivity of 2,4-D versus dicamba. And we've included 2,4-D because that is a very typical product here in the Australian market, especially over that summer cotton growing period. This table is really focused on, on leaf symptomology. So right from a 1 over 75 to 1 over 800. So showing that crops are quite sensitive to 2,4-D and dicamba or certain crops are, for example, grapes and soybeans. This 1 over 800 or 1 over 75, these are based off the high end commercial rates of, of 24D and dicamba we used in a, in a broad acre sort of commercial setting. To put it in perspective, a crop like soybeans is very sensitive to dicamba. So you're looking at less than 1 over 800 of the commercial rate showing leaf symptomology and that leaf symptomology is typically a, a clear leaf cupping effect. To put that in some context in terms of yield though, looking at a 1 to 2% rate to cause any effect to soybeans. And then also, I think the other important thing to take out of this table, crops like grapes, for example, tomatoes, watermelons have similar levels of sensitivity dicamba to 2,4-D. So that, that gives some good context here in the Australian market. <music>